Hi, welcome to the Career Sprints YouTube channel. This is Rohit and we like to produce content that helps you with your professional development and continuous learning. Now, this video is related to the content around the PM Box 7th edition. And in this video, I'd like to talk about section 2.3 of the PM Box, which basically throws some light on the functions that are associated with projects. So when we talk about functions associated with projects, one of the key things to understand is that an organization could, can have many functions or departments and these departments or other people working in these functions support projects. So the word function here can mean one person or a group of people carrying out similar tasks. Another thing to remember about functions is that functions need to coordinate with each other and coordination plays a very, very important role when it comes to the successful delivery of a project. So coordination could be decentralized. For example, the kind of decentralization that we see in agile organizations, or it could be centralized with leadership and guidance provided by a project manager or a similar role in the organization. Now talking about leadership in any organization, the qualities and style of leadership play a very, very important role in how the project is managed and finally delivered. Uh, in fact, the success of the project to a large, large extent is dependent upon the kind of leaders uh, who are leading the project. So leaders must display several qualities, some of which could be, for instance, empathy, influence, uh, care for others in the team and uh, being supportive towards the project team in general. Now, there are different types of leadership styles uh, that can be adopted, but broadly, any leadership style that you adopt, it should be supportive. Uh, basically, you should be supporting the, the project team or the, or the, or the people working uh, uh, as, as part of the project. So leadership styles that are more supportive in nature are participative leadership, a servant leadership, such as the ones carried out by agile coaches or by uh, scrum masters and so on and so forth. Right. So. Now let's talk about um, the functions and the value that they bring to a project. So what are the different kinds of functions that could exist in an, in, a, in an organization and what is the kind of value that these functions bring to projects as well? So one thing to understand here is that whether you work for a startup or for a, for a mid-sized company or for a large organization, you know, these functions could go by different names or many of these responsibilities of these functions could be combined into uh, into one person or a group of people. So the first function or the kind of people that we I would like to talk about are people who provide oversight and coordination, right? So they so people who provide oversight, oversight and coordination primarily help the project team achieve the project objectives, uh, you know, and they can do this by orchestrating the work of the project amongst various teams and departments. So one example of this function is the project management office, also called the PMO. Right. And the goal of the PMO, you know, in an organization could be to plan, lead, monitor, control, and in some cases, even provide strategic insight into the project. Uh, in addition, they can also assist with other activities uh, such as business case development, contract negotiation, and even business analysis related activities. Uh, but the broad uh, theme here is that, you know, people who provide oversight and coordination, they, they basically enable the project to fulfill the strategic objectives. That is whatever uh, the project is trying to do, it should match with the goals uh, and the uh, and the business goals of the organization. Uh, now, the next function uh, that we'll talk about is uh, about people who craft the project pro project objectives and provide feedback. So, uh, you know, one example of this uh, function could be people who are in sales and marketing or even uh, customer service teams, right? So these people, the, the main goal of, uh, you know, having these people in your organization and, you know, making them a part of your project is that they can bring you closer to your customers. Uh, needs and wants, right? So they can give you a better understanding of what your customers needs and wants are uh, and they can provide you information which can enable you to craft or design products and services which are more in tune with what your customers really, really desire, right? So when it comes to adapt adaptive projects, um, you know, you need faster feedback uh, or, or when you talk about agile projects, you need faster feedback. Uh, and the reason, you know, why you need this fast feedback is because you're developing the product incrementally. So at the end of every couple of weeks, uh, you are creating a, a version of the of the or an increment of the product. And, uh, you know, you're getting feedback from your end users or your customers and then you're building on that as well. 
And another thing to understand is that in some projects, you know, it could be the customer or the end user who directly engages with the project team. For example, in agile projects, uh, you can have your customer or your end users, you know, coming for your sprint reviews or your iteration reviews and giving you feedback firsthand, uh, you know, without the involvement of having someone in between to coordinate all this work. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's an example of uh, direct involvement of a customer or a customer uh, representative uh, when it comes to providing you with fast and uh, reliable feedback on what their needs and wants are. So let's move on and talk about the next function, which is facilitation and support. Um, so uh, people who provide facilitation and support, you know, primarily are there to facilitate and support the project team. Right. So they, they facilitate the workings of the project team and they support the project team in achieving the project goals. So generally in agile projects, uh, scrum masters or agile coaches are an example of uh, facilitators and support people. Uh, and, you know, these these agile coaches or scrum masters could be coming from the PMO as well. So facilitation, for instance, could involve bringing the team to a consensus, uh, you know, management of conflict amongst team members. Uh, or amongst team members and stakeholders uh, and leading the team in such a way that they are able to find their own answers uh, rather than someone spoon feeding them those answers. So facilitators or coaches create an environment where the team is able to think on its own feet, where the team is able to uh, coordinate with uh, or the team members are able to coordinate with each other uh, in a way that they are able to find the answers to their own problems rather than someone really telling them uh, the answer. Uh, so, you know, that way it also brings the team closer together, it makes the team more cohesive and it also enhances the team's uh, problem solving skills as well. Uh, and lastly, facilitators, you know, can also coordinate meetings uh, and they can contribute to the fulfillment of project objectives in an unbiased uh, manner as well. Now, the next set of uh, people or functions that we are going to talk about are people who actually do the project work. So these are people who are the doers. Uh, these are the people who have the skills and expertise in their own area. So for, in, for example, it could be uh, in a software project, it could be a person who does development related work or someone who does testing related work or someone who does UX design. So these are people who are experts in their own area, uh, you know, and they are primarily responsible for, uh, for executing the project and uh, and and carrying out the work of the uh, of the project so these people uh, you know basically are specialists uh, and the main thing about specialists is that they should be able to coordinate with each other and be able to work with each other to produce a valuable outcome so these specialists could be involved full time in a project so if they are full time employees of the company they could be involved full time in the project or you know, they could also be involved part time in the project, which means they could be working in multiple projects uh, within the organization at the same time, or they could be <clears throat> uh, part time uh, resources that you've hired from outside uh, for for completing the work of the project. Uh, and generally, uh, you know, you would have a, a cross functional project team. Uh, you know, that's uh, one of the main ingredients of a good project that you have a good cross functional project team and the team members are able to uh, work with each other in a way that, uh, you know, they are they are able to uh, produce benefits uh, for the project. Now, let's talk about people who bring, uh, you know, a certain level of expertise to the project, right? So, uh, you know, this is another function that could be there in the organization. These could be just actually regular people in the organization who bring a certain level of depth and higher understanding about different elements of the project. So like it says, people in this function provide the knowledge, the vision and the expertise in a specific subject area uh, for the project. And, you know, they can work in an advisory capacity um, so they can advise the project team or people who are working in the project. Uh, you know, about certain elements uh, uh, related to the project, which would basically enable them to do their work faster, do their work more efficiently, uh, or, or solve a problem uh, that they are challenged with. Uh, uh, so so these, these are the kind of people who have, uh, you know, a certain number of years of experience behind them, or uh, they, they, they possess certain knowledge, you know, which is not uh, widely available within the organization. So they are definitely key contributors to the project as well.
All right then, thanks for watching part one of the functions associated with projects video. We'll release the next part tomorrow. And if you like the video, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel that keeps us driven to produce more valuable content for you. Thank you.